Tonight, G20 meets. PM Modi holds talks with Italy, France and UK on sidelines of G20 summit in Brazil. Fuel to fire. Ukraine gets green light to use US long-range missiles while Kremlin warns of escalation of the tensions. Striving for peace. Lebanon Hezbollah agree to US proposed ceasefire deal with Israel. And Seed Guardians. An emerging group of farmers grow and protect forgotten food varieties, keeping them safe from industrial agriculture and genetic modification. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Other Than World News Tonight. Very good evening and welcome to World News Tonight. We are here again to bring you key stories across the globe over the weekend and for this Tuesday and we begin today in neighbouring India. On the sidelines of the ongoing G20 summit in Brazil, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi held bilateral talks with leaders of Britain, France, Italy and Indonesia. The priority points across all bilateral agreements were to review the cooperation in various areas of mutual interest, bilateral trade and discuss various areas of cooperation. One of the major highlights of these meetings was the announcement of two new consulates in the United Kingdom. Prime Minister Keir Starmer's office said Britain will restart talks with India on a free trade deal in the new year, following a months-long pause in negotiations due to the elections in both countries. Starmer's office said after the meeting with Modi that London will seek a new strategic partnership with India as well as deepening cooperation in areas like security, education, technology and climate change. French President Emmanuel Macron hailed the rich and multifaceted partnership between India and France in a post on social media platform X. Modi also held separate meetings with Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni and Indonesian President Prabowo Subianto. During the bilateral talks with Indonesian President Subianto, the focus was on cooperation in the fields of trade, tourism, defence and connectivity. While discussing the global and regional issues, they discussed close collaboration within the G20 and primacy to Global South. The PM mentioned India's Arctic policy as the strengthening point of the bilateral relations. Trade and economic cooperation were also a talking point more so in light of the signing of the Indian-European Free Trade Association Trade and Economic Partnership Agreement. Over in Hong Kong, the High Court sentenced 45 pro-democracy activists to up to 10 years in prison following a landmark trial that violated the city's democracy movement and drew global criticism. The charges were for holding an unofficial vote in 2020 to choose candidates for a legislative election. 47 pro-democracy activists were arrested and charged in 2021 under Beijing's national security law. Prosecutors accused the activists of conspiracy to commit subversion. One of them is former legal scholar Benny Tai. He was labeled an organizer of the arrested activist. 14 Democrats were found guilty in May, including Australian Gordon Ng and activist Owen Chow, while two were cleared. The other 31 pleaded guilty and have now been sentenced. In the early hours of Tuesday morning, supporters were waiting for the verdict outside the West Kowloon Magistrate's Court. Police set up tight security as hundreds lined up with umbrellas in the light rain to get a seat in the main courtroom and overflow areas. The ruling, criticized for harming Hong Kong's reputation as a financial center, comes as the city hosts a business summit. But the Chinese and Hong Kong governments say the national security laws were needed after the 2019 pro-democracy protest and the activists were treated in accordance with local laws. Some Western governments have criticized the activists' treatment, with the U.S. calling it politically motivated. U.S. President-elect Donald Trump's nominee for Secretary of State Marco Rubio has strongly criticized the trial. In an open letter, he called the convictions of the Democrats proof of the national security law's attack on Hong Kong's freedoms and independence. President Biden has permitted Ukraine to use US-made long-range missiles to strike Russia. These missiles have a range of nearly 200 miles. Russia accusing the U.S. of escalating tensions and throwing fuel on the fire as President Biden gives the green light to Ukraine to fire long-range American missiles on targets inside Russia. But it's Russia also escalating with massive daily attacks against civilians and power plants across Ukraine. Those ballistic missiles, known as Atakums, have a maximum range of 190 miles. 
they've only been authorized to be used in Russia's Kursk region for now. Ukrainian soldiers seize territory there for leverage in truce talks. The U.S. move driven by Russia's decision to bring in thousands of North Korean soldiers to join the fight. It comes just two months before President-elect Trump takes office on a promise to end the war in 24 hours. Ohio officials have denounced a small contingent of neo-Nazis who paraded through a Columbus neighborhood waving flags featuring swastikas and shouting a racist slur in the latest public demonstration by white nationalists in recent years across the United States. This morning, new surveillance footage of an armed group of men carrying flags emblazoned with swastikas marching through the streets of Columbus, Ohio. The troubling incident happening Saturday afternoon. Each person dressed head to toe in all black, masks concealing their faces. They shouted vile and racist speech against Jews and people of color. Ohio's governor denouncing the neo-Nazis, writing, There is no place in this state for hate, bigotry, anti-Semitism, or violence. Hate crimes have been on the rise for the past several years, according to data from the FBI. The Anti-Defamation League also notes a stunning increase in acts of anti-Semitism, with incidents doubling last year compared to 2022. Overnight, African-American community leaders in Columbus taking to the same streets in a peaceful counter-protest. Just a week ago in Michigan, another group carrying Nazi flags outside a theater production of The Diary of Anne Frank. Well, let's take a short commercial break now. More world news coming right after this. Well, on the road to the White House now, President-elect Donald Trump has nominated former Congressman and Fox Business host Sean Duffy to lead the Department of Transportation. If confirmed, Duffy will oversee aviation, automotive, rail, transit and other transportation policies at the department with about a $110 billion budget. Duffy served in the U.S. House of Representatives from 2011 to 2019, representing Wisconsin's 7th Congressional District. He most recent was co-host of Fox Business, The Bottom Line, after joining Fox News as a contributor in 2020. Duffy's last day as Fox News employee was Monday and Wednesday marked his last day appearing on Fox Business and he interviewed for the role of Transportation Secretary later in the week. Trump in a statement praised Duffy as tremendous and well-liked public servant and said he was a respected voice and communicator in the Republican conference during his time in Congress. Further adding, Trump also commented that he will prioritize excellence, competence, competitiveness and beauty when rebuilding America's highways, tunnels, bridges and airports. He will ensure ports and dams serve the American economy without compromising national security and he will make the sky safe again by eliminating DEI for pilots and air traffic controllers. New York Governor Kathy Hochul declared a drought watch for the state. Fifteen counties, including New York City, have been issued drought warnings. Residents have been urged to conserve water. Multiple new fires breaking out in the bone-dry northeast. South of New York City, the so-called Country Club fire sparking up in Lakewood, New Jersey, quickly spreading to about 30 acres. At the same time, east of Hartford, Connecticut, firefighters battling to get a 26-acre fire under control there. And outside New York City, firefighters urge residents in more than 150 homes to evacuate near the Jennings Creek fire after it jumped containment lines over the weekend. And in Rockland County, New York, friends, family, and first responders gathering to honor 18-year-old Dariel Vasquez, who was killed while working the Jennings Creek Fire November 9th. His aunt, Erica De Jesus, remembering him as someone who lifted others up. Updating you now on the crisis in Gaza, Lebanon and Hezbollah have agreed to a U.S. proposal for a ceasefire with Israel. A top Lebanese official described the effort as the most serious yet to put an end to the fighting. Ali Hassan Halil described the effort as the most serious yet to end the fighting. Halil is an aide to Nambi Buri, Lebanon's parliament speaker. Buri has been endorsed by Hezbollah, which is backed by Iran, and has been negotiating over a ceasefire. There was no immediate comment from Israel. 
Diplomacy has been in the spotlight in recent days. World powers have said the ceasefire must be based on UN Security Council Resolution 1701. It ended a 2006 war between Israel and Hezbollah. Under it, Hezbollah would need to move weapons and fighters further back from the Israeli border. Halil says Lebanon presented comments on the U.S. proposal and that all the comments affirmed the, quote, precise adherence to Resolution 1701. He says the success of the initiative now relies on Israel. Widespread shortages and months of grinding war in Gaza have generated a trade in old clothing, much of it salvaged from under the rubble as Palestinians find ways to survive for more than a year since Israel started its relentless bombardments. Under the piles of rubble littering southern Gaza are old clothes and shoes that have become a lifeline for Palestinians struggling to survive in the enclave's ruined economy. In the wrecked city of Han Yunus, Moin Abu Oder is hunting for anything that could be sold for cash more than a year since Israel started its relentless bombardments. The father of four says he hopes to buy flour with the money. Widespread shortages and more than a year of war have generated a trade in old clothing. Much of it is salvaged from the ruins of the homes of people who have died in the conflict. At this makeshift market, Louis Abdarrahman is a seller who was displaced from northern Gaza. He arrived in the south with his family, with only their clothes on their back. Israel's military campaign since Hamas's October 7, 2023 attack has devastated Gaza. It has left an estimated 42 million tons of debris piled where houses, mosques, schools and shops used to stand. In April, the United Nations estimated it would take 14 years to dispose of the wreckage. The UN official overseeing the problem said early October the cleanup at that point would cost at least $1.2 billion. Boeing will lay off more than 2,500 workers in the U.S. states of Washington, Oregon, South Carolina and Missouri as part of the debt-heavy U.S. plane makers plan to cut 17,000 jobs or 10 percent of its global workforce. Boeing in the filing Monday said it had sent layoff notices to over 2,500 workers in the states of Washington, Oregon, South Carolina and Missouri. It's part of the debt-ridden plane-maker's plan to trim 17,000 jobs globally or 10% of its workforce. Those who were let go were mostly engineers, technicians and non-union workers, the bulk of them in Washington state where nearly 2,200 workers received notices. Layoffs varied between sections. An engineer in Boeing Defense, Space and Security told Reuters all but two or three members of his 12-person team were let go. Another said she was the only one in her roughly 20-person team to receive a layoff notice. Both said they provide vital support for production and design engineers. The company told affected workers they will stay on Boeing's payroll until January to comply with a federal 60-day notice period rule. News of cuts in November was widely expected. Boeing had said it started issuing notices last week, and another round is expected in December. The notices come as Boeing aims to restart production of its best-selling 737 MAX jet following a week's-long strike. Strike! 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 The stoppage ended earlier this month, having crippled much of the firm's airplane output. Well, let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back. Two decades after Wicked first opened on Broadway, the hit musical is being reimagined as a movie that will open next week. It's the newest chapter of a beloved prequel. A movie version of Wicked, the story of Oz before Dorothy dropped in. You're beautiful. What an unlikely friendship was forged between Elphaba, the green-skinned girl who would become the Wicked Witch of the West, and Glinda the Good. Just come with me. I couldn't possibly. This is your moment. I'm coming. They're played by Cynthia Erivo and Ariana Grande. Wicked was a hit novel published nearly 30 years ago. That book inspired a musical that after two decades is still defying gravity on Broadway. Those iconic songs are mixed with movie magic, dancing through life, giving us a new route to the Emerald City. Who are you? And why do you seek me? 
night, excitement's building. Amazing. For another trip down the yellow brick road via the silver screen. And finally tonight, Seed Guardians, a group of experts in Chile, are collecting, trading and planting hundreds of seeds to preserve forgotten varieties of vegetables in tradition with the indigenous Mapuche people. These are Chile's Seed Guardians. They're an emerging group of farmers and growers trying to protect the traditional crops of their ancestors. They collect, trade and plant hundreds of seeds to preserve forgotten varieties of vegetables plants that were historically farmed by the indigenous Mapuche people. They were not reproduced because of the plant's own characteristics. Guardian Ana Yanez says the vegetables they're trying to save are dwindling due to environments or farmers opting for higher yield varieties. Experts like agronomist Ricardo Pertuz say that preserving diverse varieties of crops is key for areas affected by climate change. The Guardians have been finding clients in high-end restaurants around the country. Pablo Caceres is a seed guardian and chef, who says he normally doesn't find more than five varieties of tomatoes at markets. But this year, he says he'll have 26 varieties, and that the group is adding more every year. And with that, we wrap up today's bulletin. Join us again tomorrow for the latest updates from around the world. Stay tuned as we have Anuradhi Vikram Singh joining you next on the Nightly Business Report. Thank you for watching and have a great night.